So if you've ever installed an operating system on a PC before, then you're probably familiar with the process of creating bootable media. 20 years ago, this was accomplished by burning an image file to a CD or DVD. But then several years later, USB flash drives became the standard for creating bootable media, which could be done by using software such as Rufus or Etcher. But the problem with this method is that only one image can be loaded at a time, and the drive can't be used to store anything else regardless of how much capacity it has. For power users who like to distro hop and use other bootable applications, this is a limitation that can be quite annoying. Wouldn't it be great if your flash drive could hold more than one image and still be bootable? Well, it turns out there's a solution, and it's called Ventoy. After formatting your drive with Ventoy, you can simply drag and drop image files to the drive, and all of them will be bootable. You'll be able to choose which one you want to boot when you turn on the PC. In addition to this, you can still use the drive to store other types of files too, so you don't lose out on anything when you format the drive with Ventoy. Also, you're not just limited to USB flash drives, you can install Ventoy to any drive including internal hard disks and SSDs. Personally, I use an external 256GB SSD as my Ventoy drive, giving me plenty of space to keep a variety of different distros and other tools. It's also much faster than a regular USB flash drive. But for the purposes of this tutorial, I'll be installing Ventoy to the 64GB thumb drive. Alright, so let's get started. First, download Ventoy by navigating to the download section of the official site, and this will take you to the GitHub page where you can download the file. I'll leave the link in the video description. Ventoy is available for both Windows and Linux. If you're using Windows, simply download this file here, extract it, and then double click the Ventoy 2 disk file. If you're using Linux, download this file instead, extract it, and then double click Ventoy GUI x86-64 to run it. So now let's navigate to options. If you want your drive to be bootable on systems that have secure boot enabled, then you'll want to keep this option checked. Now let's look at partition style. The two options are MBR and GPT. GPT is the newer format, but in most situations this option won't make a difference. The vast majority of systems will be able to boot with either option. Most older systems that have a legacy BIOS will still be able to recognize drives formatted with a GPT partition. However, there will be some exceptions, and in those cases you'll need to use MBR partition instead. Likewise, newer systems that are running a UEFI BIOS will still be able to read MBR partitions. However, there might be a few motherboards that have dropped support for MBR, in which case you'll need to use the GPT format. Now let's look at partition configuration. Most people won't need to change anything here. Just make sure a line partition with 4 kilobytes is enabled. The last option here is called Show All Devices. This will allow you to install Ventoy to internal drives. So if I click this, you can see my internal NVMe drive is now listed as a device. But I won't be installing to an internal drive today, so I'll uncheck that option. Now I'll plug in my USB flash drive and then hit the refresh button. And now you can see my 64GB drive I just plugged in. Next, simply hit install, and then click OK to acknowledge that this drive is about to be erased. And that's all you need to do to install Ventoy. Now you can use the drive like you would any other external drive. So to access it, you'll first need to mount it. Like I mentioned earlier, not only can you load images and ISO files to the drive, but you can use it to store any other type of file as well. But for now I'm going to transfer a Windows 10 installer and a few Linux distros as an example. So I'll simply drag and drop these ISO files onto the drive, and then wait for the transfer to finish. Now it's done transferring so let's test it out. I'll reboot the computer and then head into the BIOS. We need to make sure the Ventoy drive is first on the boot list. So navigate to the boot order priorities list and make sure the USB hard disk is the number one option. Then go to save changes and reboot. 
Keep in mind these menus will look different depending on which motherboard you have. If all goes well you'll see the Ventoy logo pop up along with a list of the ISO files you loaded onto the drive. Now simply navigate to the file you want to boot, in this case I'll choose Ubuntu as an example, and push enter, and then select boot in normal mode. And as you can see Ubuntu is now booting up just as you'd expect it to. Thanks to Ventoy, the entire process of running bootable media is now easier than ever. Now one last thing I wanted to quickly mention, the developers update the software from time to time with bug fixes, so if you decide to download a newer version of Ventoy and want to update a drive that has an older version installed, you can simply hit the update button here. Well that wraps up my guide on how to use Ventoy. I hope all of you found it useful and easy to follow. If you have any thoughts or questions then feel free to drop a comment. Also be sure to like the video and consider subscribing to the channel. I cover all sorts of technology related content including more advanced topics such as programming, circuits, and engineering. So please stay tuned if you're interested in these sort of things. As always, thanks for watching, and see you next time.